I'm very happy to be here today and talk to you about this wonderful program that I get to uh, tell people about. I just want to focus on one thing today, <clears throat> though, uh, in particular, is the, uh, I want to focus on the line of credit because uh, that's something that um, everybody knows that pretty much that the reverse mortgage, uh, one of the options they have to it, but there's, there's some elements to it that are, that are very exciting and um, very different from the, from the uh, line of credit you see today. Uh, with the regular lenders. For example, uh, back in 2007 when we had the implosion loan, um, if you had a line of credit with a major bank, uh, they would freeze it or suspend it or cut it out altogether. You, just, you couldn't take any more money out of there because um, you know, they very prudently said, hey, look, the market's going down, so we can't give them money out of their equity that they don't have. And um, that's one of the differences between that program and the reverse mortgage. When you get a revert, when you get a reverse mortgage with the line of credit option, uh, that line of credit is always there regardless of market conditions. And what's really unique about this is the fact that this line of credit is not only there; it actually grows. Um, it really doesn't make sense uh, because who gives you a line of credit that gets bigger as time goes on? Um, but this, this program was put together by bureaucrats. It wasn't put together by a lender for profit. And so it's, it's, it's a benefit very much like um, uh, Social Security or Medicare. Um, and, and so that it, the purpose for being there in the first place was to be a benefit to the, to the uh, senior homeowner in America and um, without regard to profit. So they did some things. And one of them is this growth rate. So. If you'll notice in there, there's a, one of the pages I did a, I did a, um, an option to the home equity conversion mortgage. By the way, um, in 1988, <clears throat> that's when this program was born. The reverse, the first reverse mortgage was done back in 1961. A lady named Nellie Young um, is the first recipient of a reverse mortgage. Her husband passed away, and uh, he was a local high school football coach, and she walked to the bank wanting a loan because. You know, she had a mortgage to pay and things like that. And they couldn't help her, and so they came up with this idea: Look, we're gonna we're gonna give you some money now. We're gonna pay off your mortgage now, and um, and then we're gonna take your house when you die. And it was like that until from '61 to 1988. And um, since that time, we haven't stolen a single house. I'm very happy to say. Um, <laughs> what good are you? <laughs> That's a recommendation. Uh, who said you want? <laughs> well, Congress, Congress did not like the idea of banks taking houses from seniors, uh, their families, so forth. And um, I guess they didn't like the competition. I don't know, but they um, they wanted us. To, they want they wanted to be a real program for seniors that 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 would. Um, be a beneficial to them over the years, and this one really is. Problem is, it's really misunderstood. Uh, but I'll, getting back to the line of credit, um, right now the credit, the line of credit growth is about 4.45 percent, and uh, that can go up or down depending on interest rates and so forth. But um, uh, for example, in this in this one here, I used um, the Heckam growth. It's remember, it's not reverse mortgage anymore. It's home equity conversion mortgage. Um, on, the, on the one here, it says, oh, growth rate, line of credit. If you'll notice, um, the gentleman here, there's George, he was 70, he had a house in, in um, Sacramento for 726, 525. There was no lien. <coughs> and so all he wanted was the line of credit. Yeah. Sorry? The, next. <laughs> the last illustration. Uh, the last page. Oh, okay. This, this yeah, page here. Yeah. Sorry. This picture. <laughs> I wasn't there. Sorry. There's only four of them, folks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fine. Shouldn't take him more than 10 or 15 minutes. <laughs> but uh, this just gives you an illustration. Uh, out of his line of credit, uh, his benefit amount was $367,251. That's what his benefit amount was. Now, out of that, he could have paid off a mortgage or, um, or got a monthly income or whatever, but he just chose the line of credit to sit there and in case he ever needed it. Now the nice thing about this is so it, uh, in five years that line of credit if he doesn't use it is worth 454 zero 060, zero 033. Uh, in 10 years it's worth over a half million dollars $561,000. Uh, at the end of every year they will do the the, uh, the growth rate on it. We'll calculate that. 
And um, so I, I've done a number of these where uh, the people didn't take any, not even take a, 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 an initial cash draw. They just left it in there. They didn't. It's like no loan because keep in mind, the whole time this loan's sitting there, this money's sitting there, you're not paying interest on it. You're not accruing interest. It's just sitting there waiting for you to take. So it's somebody else's money that you get to have that will grow for you and you're not paying anything for it. You're not paying any interest on it. Now when you use it, let's say you go buy a car with it. You, you, you call us up, customer service, hey, I need $25,000 for a car. Then obviously you'll have a $25,000 loan on the house and that way you're, you'll have to, you'll, you'll be accruing interest on that loan at about 4.45% right now. So this is very unique. Um, and by the way, he could have alluded, he could have um, uh, selected the uh, monthly income tax-free of $1,831 a month for as long as he lives there. That's one of the options. Um, but I wanted to bring up the fact about the line of credit because everybody knows there is one, but they don't know there's some little aspects to it um, that are really beneficial and they really help out the senior over time because even though the money will always be there, it's also growing even in a down market. Uh, if, if we hit rock bottom like we did in 2007 again, that's still growing. Well, the market, whether the house is going down in value, it doesn't make yeah, I heard of him. Um, From the letter. It's, it's not supposed to make sense. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not right, is it? <laughs> Um, but again, this was not designed by a lender. It was designed by the government to be a benefit to the borrower, to the, awesome. to the senior homeowner. So that was all I wanted to talk to you about today because I didn't want to bore you with all the other stuff. I just thought this is a lot really worth talking about because nobody knows about it. So, yes, sir. I have, I have a question, and you know, this goes just to my basic um, lack of understanding of the whole thing. So. You made a couple mentions of you know that you could you could use the money to pay down the mortgage. So, to, in order to use this program, you don't have to have the home necessarily paid off completely. Well, we have to pay it off. If you have a mortgage on there, that gets paid off first. We we eliminate any we retire any current mortgage on there. You get the rest. So, for example, if you he got three hundred sixty-seven thousand. If he had let's say a two hundred thousand dollar loan. We would have to pay that off first. Now his line of credit would be 167,000. Okay. Okay. There can only be one loan. If there's a reverse mortgage, there can only be one loan on it, and that's the reverse mortgage. Right. Your previous page. Yes, sir. Um, you have uh, so this per this reflects what you were saying to Sean. So this particular guy yes. has a hundred and forty-four thousand dollar yes mortgage. Yes. He wanted to. Eliminate some of his other debt here. Yes. So there was a total payoff of two eleven. Did he take um, the equity line at three fifty nine? Is that what he did? Okay. What? The, okay. The benefit amount was three fifty nine. Right. If and if they owed nothing and they just want a line of credit, that would be the line of credit amount. But <clears throat> they had a current. She had a current mortgage of one forty four. So we had to pay that off. That right. was required. Uh, the other things, the, the cash out items. Um, that we gave her the cash for that, for the uh, to paying off the credit card debt, yeah. the auto loan, and the kitchen remodel. Right. We gave her cash for that. Mel, I got a question for you. Yes. So, sir. with them using that home equity line, just like you said, mm -hmm. they do the zero draw on the payment, right? Mm -hmm. So, in this situation, if they're using that home equity line to pay off their current mortgage, what they do now have another mortgage payment, correct? Because they're using the home equity. No, line they, to do they're something. using this mortgage to pay off that one. So we're retiring right, that. But you're still using a portion of that home equity line. Do they have a payment now attached to that home equity line? No, there's no payment on it. For as long as you live on the property, there's no payment on this. <coughs> so if you, for example, Unless everything we've done here, for, by the way, her name was Donna. Yeah. <laughs> everything we did for Donna, we, we paid off her, mortgage, <coughs> her two mortgages for 144. We gave her cash out to pay off her credit cards and, and um, auto loan and, yeah. and the kids remodel. Those are all cash. All right. So 211 is her loan amount. Because we paid off the 144 and the other, uh, the other three remaining items. So now her, her 211 is what she has um, on the actual loan. She still has another 148,000 that she's not accruing interest on. Okay, so I'm a senior. That's I'm the retired. line of credit. Mel, I'm yes. a senior. I'm retired. I got a $350,000 line with a zero drop, and I decided to use 50,000 of that. Mm -hmm. I'm paying interest on that 50,000. You will accrue interest on accrue that. interest, but we're not actually paying. Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So it just goes against the equity over time. Yes. So, and then yes. when they die, that's when the 
Uh, the company, the, the Grim Reaper. Okay, once, okay. <laughs> once the, you don't have to die. You just have to move out permanently. <laughs> okay. Once you move out permanently, you have a year. You have a year in which to repay the loan. Um, most of the time, people sell it. It can be it can be the homeowner themselves if they've just moved, or it can be the heirs. Right. Got it. Um, okay. Whatever's left over after they get all the interest on the loan goes to the heirs or. To now, what if they want to pay off the. The, the home equity line, is it is it a simple interest loan or is it? it it's compounded. It is compounded. Yeah. Okay. Oh. yeah. So, uh, but they can refinance anytime they want or sell anytime they want. Yeah. It's a, there's no prepayment penalty or anything like that. Now, compare that to taking the monthly income. What, uh, uh, at 890, yeah. what happened? Uh, so they would either have an, uh, a line of credit at $148,000 left over, or they could take 890 right. a month. Now they can get that line of credit back if they just decide, if they if they call up they say look I don't want to get my payments monthly payments anymore. right just let me have access then to they'll do that reduced based on the fact they've yeah. been taking yeah. money out absolutely gotcha yeah. <coughs> two comments. Um, so I have a client right now that, that the brother passed away. He had a reverse mortgage, so I'm dealing with the sister through probate. Mm -hmm. oh, so the um, she's the administrator. The home equity line of credit that he had still accrues interest, mm -hmm. but as it gets prepared for sale, it that will be paid off, and then the excess equity will then be distributed to the estate. So Correct. it works like a charm. So what I see on this is that this is a lifestyle deal. So I come across occasionally an older, uh, usually a widow, who through whatever reason they didn't properly plan for life without the other spouse. So incomes go away and that kind of stuff, but they have a large amount of equity in their house. And what this seems to me is they're able to tap that equity and control their expenses as a way of you know, coming out from underneath this choking, uh, Lifestyle yeah. of having to barely afford health care, barely afford yeah. the groceries. Yeah. Is Paying that off other debts. Yeah, so this it's isn't a, for everybody, it seems like, but it serves for some. This is a lifestyle. <laughs> it is, and, and quite honestly, people mm -hmm. in my age group, the baby boomers, they didn't save the way the previous generations did. And um, this is a this is a, um, a godsend for a lot of people. Sometimes they just they're broken. Sometimes they just take advantage of it because it's there. Um, but it really is a, a life. It's it's a it's a it's a lifestyle, if you will. Um, many times people do it just because they they don't have enough money to, to go have fun and do things that they like to do and have a life of leisure. Um, it's for the here and now. I tell people it's for the here and now. It's not for down the road. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Right. Does this still apply if the property is owned by a trust? I'm sorry. Does this still apply if the property is owned by a trust and not the individual? Can the trust it, well if. if you should have a trust in California, if you, I'm sure you know, if you have real estate. So we only, you know, I shouldn't say we only do these in trust, but I don't like to start them unless they are in a trust. I don't like to get going on. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So this is good for people that have an income gap to fill that gap? Or, or who is the it, ideal? It, it could be that. It could be an income gap. It could just be, um, you know, they, they're, they're, they're getting by. They're paying their bills, but they're not having any fun. They're not, they're not, they want to go on a cruise. Uh, <coughs> You know, they want to travel. Uh, I, have, I have one guy buy a motorhome because he's got grandkids in four states and never gets a chance to see them. So rather than just fly there all the time, he bought a motorhome. I, I had a couple uh, in Louisiana who um, need to buy a, a van. They both had cancer and they need to go see their doctors. And um, uh, he was terminal. And about six months after I funded a loan, the wife called me and let me know their husband had passed away. And, that's the kind of relationship you have with your clients in this business. It's it's not just this isn't something I sell or whatever. I just show them how it works and I'll apply to them. Hey Mel, and they make a choice. Yes. I don't know if we have time for you to answer this question, so maybe we talk later. But yeah, uh, twelve minutes. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so so your client fortunately passes away, and they have a four hundred thousand dollar reverse mortgage on that house. Okay. What happens? Well, she still lives there. Right. She passed away. So she's oh, she's so both passed of them, both of them are she's okay. passed away. All right, she's got a family. If they've got a trust, yep, yeah. it's in a trust. Okay, it's in a trust. They have a four hundred thousand dollar reverse mortgage. Okay. Okay. So the grandchildren get it. 
or the, or the excuse me, the heirs get it, and they and they can do anything they want. They now own the property, so if they want to sell it, they can, or they can just refinance it if they want to. But it has to be paid off. Um, but it has to be paid off. The loan has to be paid off, so they can do that with insurance money. Um, they've got a year, to do it. and yeah, okay. the, the, the lender is not in a hurry to rush out there and stick a sign on it. They don't want to deal with. They don't make any money on this deal. So they want the family. One of my jobs used to be when I first started was contacting um, the uh, families of bar our borrowers who had reverse mortgages that passed away, oh what they want to do with the house. Mm -hmm. And uh, to, to every one of them, they had no idea. They hired lawyers, so they don't have to do that. They're not required to do anything. Um, and at that time, it was 2010, there was no equity in the home. Mm -hmm. so. Uh, I would just tell them, look, you, you, you can let them foreclose if you want to. Uh, it's not going to show up on your, it's not your loan. You're not, you're not, problems there. Uh, why get involved with selling the house if it's not going to make any money for you? And so, just, you can do a deed in lieu, which means you just deed it back to the lender. That's the easiest way to do it. But um, right now, there's been a lot, plenty of equity out there. And since that time, by the way, they keep tweaking this product, so they give you less and less equity all the time. You only get a portion of your equity, you don't get it all. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, they leave you with plenty of equity in there, and um, unless we have another 2007, chances are you'll have a good chance of having some equity when you move on, yeah. So is this done on a flat fee basis, or a percentage of the amount that you're borrowing, or how, do, how do you pay for it? Oh, uh, well you have closing costs, like mm -hmm. any other loan, you have uh, FHA's mortgage insurance, you have escrow and title fees and so forth. Mm -hmm. So, um, so no, you don't, it's not a flat fee. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it, the, the cost will vary depending on the loan amount and so forth, okay. just like it does in a regular loan. Yeah, one last observation from a real estate perspective. I come across people that are stuck in a house, so like husband or wife passes away, <coughs> the other surviving spouse is in a big home, that they don't need all that space, but they don't make the move because they can't afford to make the move. And I just want to make sure everybody knows that this can also be applied as a purchase loan yeah. uh, for them to take that equity and be able to get another property, put a reverse mortgage on it, not have the payment that they're used to. And if they're over 55, obviously they would be. Yeah. Uh, they could take their tax base to a smaller property. So for example, if somebody bought it in Fountain Valley way back in the day 60 years ago for eighty-seven thousand, and the property taxes are a thousand dollars a year they could then sell that house buy a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar condo in in landmark retirement place and bring that tax base over to that property and pay for it either cash or if they wanted to use the cash or different they could use a reverse mortgage yeah. to purchase it still not have that i'm, I'm closing one on tuesday here okay uh, um, purchase by the way if you can do anything you want with the money um, there's no, there's no, nothing to keep you from going buying other property. And so if you got, got this three hundred and fifty nine thousand dollars out, and uh, want to go buy a, a place in, let's say, Palm Springs with it, you could. <coughs> no one's going to say anything to you about it. It's your money. So in the, in that case, they would rent out the bigger house or what? They have to live in the house After that has the reverse order on it. Right. Oh, they have to um, live in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. it. But they're buying this other house. That's, 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 a, that's the second home. Oh, they're just buying the second home. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, wow. good morning, Jesus, bro. we good have four good. homes, so I thought oh. everybody well, had I, I, I don't know. I, I, no, those are called that, seasons, winter, uh, summer, spring. Um, <laughs> yeah. The look Does everybody? Face. Yeah. The look on his face was bad. You're a little crooked there. <laughs> Oh, shifty. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you so Thank much. You. Okay. Hey. Hey.